Gezu, to our fellow members of Nights on Bikes, and to bikers everywhere. My name is Bear Wozniak of the EWTN Long Ride Home TV series. Fellow Nights on Bikes member Peter Morton and I put this series of biker safety videos together for you at the inspiration of Ace Fagan, the president of Nights on Bikes USA. Peter is a certified safety instructor with both the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and Harley Davidson. So please feel free to share these videos with everyone. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com, the home of Long Ride Home TV, and consider becoming a Patreon donor and help us produce the TV show. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show and you get all seasons past to all of the episodes of Long Ride Home, plus you get early access to every new episode as soon as we produce it, months before it's released. Once so again, thank you for watching our safety videos. Vivat Jesus, this is Bear Wozniak. Uh, my ministry is Deep Adventure Ministries, and we have the TV show Long Ride Home on EWTN. I am a member of Knights on Bikes. I am a member of Knights of Columbus. I love to ride motorcycles, but I got to tell you guys, when I'm around members of Knights on Bikes, I realize I have a lot to learn from everybody. And one of the people that impressed me the most uh, is Peter Morton. He is, people call him coach now because he's been certified with the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and the Harley Davidson uh, certification too for safety. He's taught almost 400 motorcycle safety courses. So we thought we'd get together and talk about motorcycle safety, see what Peter can teach me and teach us. And uh, we're calling our our little uh, safety briefings here between two bikes. Uh, but actually it should be called between millions of bikes. I don't know how many motorcycles do you have there, Peter? Uh, I, I've got, well, three in the garage right now. There's one out in the carport and I'm down to four. <laughs> I always say you can kind of measure the level of a man's happiness by how many pistons he owns. So you seem to be pretty happy. <laughs> but we, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. You know, so so here's the thing. I know that when I'm a when I I'm a pilot, and I'm a very I'm not a very ex accomplished private pilot, but I know I have certain strategies. It's like I know if the crosswinds are at such and such an angle at such and such a speed, or if it's uh, overcast or how level how high the cloud level is. Uh, or a lot of other things, I have a strategy. I made my decisions ahead of time, what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. I do the safety thing where I check the plane. I, I, I lay out my flight plan. I have all this in mind. I know if I can't land here, I'm going to land there and things like that. So really, um, to enjoy yourself as a pilot, I need to have a, a strategy. Uh, and I need to have a backup strategy. And I know that the same thing is true of motorcycles. What would be the approach that you would recommend to people as far as just a strategy, how to enjoy their riding and how to be safe when they ride? Well, a strategy, it, it really needs to be simple. So you actually use it. And the, the strategy that uh, Motorcycle Safety Foundation came up with, and they, they uh, let me go back a little bit. They, I also teach Harley Davidson classes too, the Riding Academy classes. I've heard of Harley and Davidson. The, the Harley Davidson Riding Academy also uses the MSF core curriculum and just adds some things to it. So I, I'm speaking from from both of them. The the main strategy that we use, the simple strategy, and and, the, and that's the the beauty part about it. So simple is C. S E E C. When you're out on a motorcycle, that's what you want to be doing. You want to see all of those different factors. So you want to the S is search, and how do you search? Well, you want to be able to search a lot of beginning motorcyclists, what they want to do is they just want to pay attention to what's right in front of them. Well, when you search, what you want to do is pay attention to everything, be situationally aware, have situational awareness, and you want to keep your eyes moving. You want to keep your eyes moving far and near, side to side. In a pilot, what's the thing that you do? You're always looking out at that horizon, right? So in the, in the motorcycle too, you want to be able to look out in that in that horizon but keep your eyes moving far and near side to side most of the crashes occur in a, if you take a clock face between uh two and ten and so two, it's right out it, what happens is right out in front of you usually 75 percent of the things that are going to happen are going to be right out in front of you so keep those eyes moving far and near side to side and be aware of everything around you that's the c search 
That's the using your eyes to do that. And what most people don't realize too is that your central vision is only a three degree cone. So that which you can see clearly is very, very narrow. And most people think that it's more because they're keeping their eyes moving. Mm. So that's the key thing. Keep your eyes moving, be situationally aware. That's the search part this in the in the in C. The evaluate part, that's the brain part. That's where you use your cognitive functions, your your thinking and you're analyzing and what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for factors that could lead to a crash. So what you what you should be doing, what MSF recommends is that you're looking out there and you're saying, okay, what am I gonna do if that car pulls out in front of me? Where's my escape path? And you should have, MSF recommends that you should have at least two escape paths in mind at all times. So what if, where am I gonna go if that car pulls out in front of me. So what are your choices? Pretty simple. You can go left, you can go right, or you can stop. And those are valid, valid choices. And But if you pre-think that or you pre-plan that ahead of time, you might shave a half a second, three quarters of a second, or even as much as a second off of your reaction time. And that may mean the difference between you crashing and not. So you're constantly at, that's the cognitive part. As you're searching, you're, you're always asking the what if question. What if that car is gonna pull out? What if that kid that's playing on the side of the road darts out or a ball comes out? Or what if around the, the corner there, there's uh, something in the road? You know, what if, what if, what if? And have that uh, plan A, plan B. And you should have a minimum of plan A and plan B in mind at all times and the situation changes all the time. So what that's also doing is it's keeping your mind active it, it situationally as well. So you're not getting into that lull and, and losing consciousness. So you, your mind is always active. What if, what if, what if? Yeah, I know, I know Peter, like I was I was interviewed this morning on a radio show and the interview, interview he says he doesn't have a bike, but he loves to ride sometimes because he loves the beautiful view that you get when you're riding. And my thought was, well, yeah, but really, on a motorcycle, I may see things that I wouldn't see in a car, but I'm a whole lot more alert. I'm, I'm really being more attentive to the road and what's ahead of me and behind me than I am of the view. Yeah, you know, yeah. first and foremost, that's my focus. Well, it's kind of interesting because Harley Davidson did a study on that uh, several years ago and found out just that, uh, where motorcycling is has the, uh, um, some effects on you that actually is better than therapy. So, you know, when you hear motorcyclists saying, you know, well, wind therapy and all that, there's actually some studies that were done by doctor type people that actually proved that. <clears throat> so yes, it is very therapeutic. And why is that? Well, because you're out there, you're not in a cage anymore. You're out there with all the elements. So not only in a car, for instance, in an air conditioned car, you're, all you're really doing is seeing. The other thing, the other thing Peter, is you're really living in the now. You really have That's to exactly. be thinking. You have to be totally alert. I was in this this film called The Still Point a long time ago, a surfing film, about that moment when you're dropping in in a hollow wave and you're not thinking of anything, anything at all, but that moment. You really have to live in the now, and then it seems like miles will go by if you're doing it, if you're being totally alert to what you're supposed to be doing, and you don't you don't realize it. But you, it's not a time to kind of doze and kind of become too con contemplative. It's a time to be focused on what's happening right now. I mean, what what about that little that little branch that you're seeing coming up, or that little divot, or or the or the car that seems to not be paying attention? You have to be living right now, and that's who God is. He's he says, "I am who am I live? I am who am I am the God who is. God is the God that lives in the now. So we have to. It kind of brings us into that moment, that still point. And it's even more than that. Uh, and you are in the now, and you have to be because you're. And that's the, that's the cognitive part, that's the evaluation part. But you're also, you bring up another interesting point, and that is because you're on a motorcycle and you are out in the open, all of your senses are engaged. Your touch, you've got wind coming at you. Your smell, because now you can smell everything and, and all the nuances of that. And you can exactly. feel the temperature dropping and, and rising. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the, the input, you have much more inputs. There, there's, uh, that's another study done that there is uh, somewhere around four times as many things to do on a motorcycle than there is a car. You and come that, around that, a corner in Hawaii and you and you 
you're uh, there's no wind, and then all of a sudden there's wind coming through a, a canyon. You know, you're you're in a car, you wouldn't feel it. Right, and that's that's why it's so appealing. That's why it's uh, you're. I, I like what you said. You're in the now, and you have to be in order to survive. Yeah. So, and that brings us back to the strategy. In order to survive, you're you're the that's the the evaluation part, and then the the execute part. That's the second E in the execute, search, evaluate, execute, is if you have to, you can execute your plan. Now, there's three things that you can do to execute. The first thing that you can do is that you can, um, you, you're, is that you can, uh, well, let, let's go back to the last thing is communicate. You can communicate your intentions, uh, and that can be a wide variety of different things. Now, the um, you you have turn signals, you have hand signals, you have brake lights, you have uh, just a wide variety of things, mechanical things, on the motorcycle. Now, more importantly than that, in order to execute, you can adjust your speed either speed up. Now, when you're executing a plan, which means you're going to have to take some kind of action to avoid a crash. Um, so you can adjust your speed. That usually means slowing down, but don't discount speeding up. I was looking at a, a reviewing some uh, uh, crash scenarios that I, that I was looking at on YouTube from another channel. And there was a couple of instances where that motorcyclist got out of trouble by speeding up. Which brings us back to the the what if. If you're thinking about the what if part of it, don't discount using that that accelerator or that throttle to get you out of trouble as well. But the other thing, Peter, is I know, like in my in my ninja training, Peter, I know that we have uh, the saying of you don't have to be there, don't be there. Like for example, I'm not driving in the blind spot of a car. I'll speed up to pass the car, or I'll stay back behind it. And if I'm in the blind spot, I'm I, I'm sorry, but I'm one of those who has loud pipes for safety reasons. I'll let them know I'm there. I'll rev it a little bit so maybe they can hear me. But part of that that strategy is just don't be there. Just like you know, in fighting, don't be there. You don't have to have a bad day you, unnecessarily. You just come up with the third thing on execute, which is changing lane position or changing position. Okay, and that may be part of may be tied in with speeding up and slowing down or usually it means going left to right so you're changing changing position and that, that can get you out of trouble too so that that's executing your plan if you need to now there's a lot of things that that build up to having you do that and we call those factors and that's what you want to get really 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 good at how do you do that practice right moving your eyes searching far near side to side moving those eyes around doing that what if scenario you know picking up those factors what kind of factors could present themselves for you in motorcycles well the problem with the motorcycle is that the especially the in, in in the last few years car drivers and truck drivers are so distracted that they they, they don't pay attention as much as they should now Add to that that you are on a single track vehicle, which is very narrow and a lot smaller than what they're used to seeing. So now they see one headlight coming at you. And a lot of times those distracted drivers don't think that you, they, you are as close to them as they think. They think you're way back, which is why the, the thing that happens the most to a motorcyclist at an intersection is left turn in front of you because yes. they think you're way far back there. Mm -hmm. So when you come to an intersection, two most dangerous places for an intersect or two most dangerous places for a motorcycle are at intersections and curves, multiple vehicle crashes and curves. The most common multiple vehicle crash in an intersection, left turn in front of you. And so now when you, come to, when you come to a, uh, your reaction time, uh, is about somewhere between three quarters of a second to a second and a half. Now, if you think about that, 
that was that. It took me to snap I, my finger. I tend to slow blood. down, like when I'm riding in the city at intersections. I'm looking every possible way. My head's on a swivel, and I and I slow down to give myself more uh, maneuverability and, and and you know have have my options. The other thing is, I know like in piloting a plane, they always say it's when you, there's a crash, it's usually pilot error, but it's not one error. It's a bad judgment, another bad judgment, and then the third bad judgment gets you. So you're coming, you're cu you're driving too fast coming to the intersection. You're going downhill, so you should have been going a little bit slower anyway. You're not being alert to all the quadrants of something that could happen. Tell me what kind of experiences have, have you, do you, what have you experienced in intersections? Let me go back to, uh, let me go back to what you just said. In the motorcycle world, we call that a uh, multiple factors. Okay, so that there's never really just one, one reason for a crash. There's usually a buildup or a multitude of factors. Well, give us some up. examples of, of real life stories like that. In intersections? Yes. Mm -hmm. The multiple factor well, situation. Well, what could happen? Common one is left turn in front of me. I, I see that almost on every trip. But, there's but what you're doing is if you know that that's going to happen, like you said, then be aware of that. Have a strategy to be aware of that and, you know, be, make sure that, that that person, if they do turn in front of you, where am I going to go? Now, most people, what they think of, if a car is coming left in front of me, they're going to say, well, I need to get out of their way. So they go in front of them. And that may not be the best choice. You may want to go behind them. If you have time enough to stop, which is not as frequent, uh, then, then stop. Uh, sometimes you don't have a whole lot of room to go behind them or even to go in front of them. So you have to stop. So the, the point is to stop as much as you can to minimize the impending damage. I hear a lot of, of uh, motorcyclists say, well, I had to lay her down. Well, you intentionally caused a crash and you lose all control of your motorcycle, particularly steering, when you laid that thing down. Now, what's going to move a whole lot faster? Shiny parts skidding on the road or rubber? Well, you have much more control. Learn how to ride that thing and pick up those factors early to keep you out of trouble. Uh, now, in intersections, uh, there's also cross traffic that happens a lot. Uh, people don't pay attention, people going too fast. The other thing that, that happens a lot is, um, in, in Georgia anyway, a yellow light means, well, speed up and go through it. Right. You know, let's go through it. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not a let's slow down all that much and stop. So it's, it, be, be very aware of that. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the thing is, that going back to that uh, one second um, time that it takes to react to your controls, here's one of the things that you can do. If we already know that intersections are dangerous, then why not? Cover the controls. Cover the controls. Put four fingers on top of the clutch, four fingers on top of the front brake, and be ready. That may cut a third of a second, half a second off your reaction time, uh, in case you need to do that. And and that will that cuts down the reaction times, and that may mean the difference in a, in a crash. You know, so that's part of the strategy. You know, in our martial arts, you know, in black belt level training, um, we call it staging a fight. Well, how do you know to react so good? Well, actually, I staged the fight. I, I tell, I gave him a target. I, I gave him, I kind of knew what he was going to do because I gave him an enticing target, things like that. In motorcycle riding, it's the same thing. You can stage what's if it's going to happen, it's going to happen this way. I'm going to be on this side of the lane. It may be the safest thing. My hands are going to be covering the brake. Um, you know, things like that. Stage it so that. You can, you're, you're, you, wow, your reaction time was amazing. Well, maybe it wasn't just reaction. Maybe it was this uh, evaluating and looking at, at the factors and preparing for it that those few, those few that, things you do. Point, that's a good point to bring out. What can we do to stage? Well, some of the things we can do is lane position. Uh, and that's called margin of safety. Where can you have the most margin of safety? Maybe through an intersection, it's in the middle. Now you have most margin of safety on both sides, or maybe it's my default riding position, nothing else going on that I'm, I'm having to react to is going to be in lane position one, which is left of center. That's my default lane position. Why I tell that? you my, what you mean by left of center. If it's a if it's two, two lane road, 
one angle in either direction. Where do you, where is your default position? In 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 a motorcycle, you got to remember motorcycle single track vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you have three basic lane positions to deal with, which is lane position one left, lane position two which is center, and lane position three which is right. Now, not talking about curves, we'll talk about that in a minute. But just going straight, lane position one, two, three. My default is lane position one, which is close to the center line. The reason for that being is if there's any kind of traffic, I can see around better and they can see people in front of me can see me better. And I'm not inviting people behind me to share the lane with me. Because yes. they're going to, if I go right or lane position three, then that's kind of inviting them to come up and share the lane with me and get by me. And I don't want them to do that. And I know so, so many people, times on a freeway, that guy coming in merging or when you're just going through a, a regular road, that guy on the right lane sees the car, doesn't see you, and you get, it gives you that little margin of error. And, of course, so what, what, what would be the reason not to be in lane position three, That being close to the curb, do, the side of the road? What are the hazards of doing that? To be in lane position three? Yeah, what are the hazards of being there? Well, for the ones that I just said, um, Plus, it, it, and when we talk about curves, that's not where you want to be in the beginning. And there's, there's all kinds of, of, of reasons not to be. There are some good reasons to be there. Uh, but it, it, from a default, default standpoint, it, you're much better off being in lane position one. Well, what's a good reason that's to be in lane position three? What is a couple of reasons why you might you want to be there? Some things, you have some things going on. Uh, maybe that uh, you're making different turns. Um, I like to be in lane position three if I'm making a left turn gives me the most arc to deal with. Um, if there's something in the road, um, if there's, um, it, it, it's situational. You'd have to well, you'd have to read that situation. And then lane position two is probably the most dangerous because of- it, it's, the most, it's the most dangerous because it it's, that's where the, the slippery stuff is, generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. But you have plenty of traction uh, a lot of studies have been done on this. You have plenty of traction, generally speaking, if it's dry. It becomes a problem when it first starts to rain because that's when everything gets loosened up and that's when it becomes real slick. But after a few minutes of rain, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so, all that stuff washes off. So now you're back to that. Um, which rain is another. We can talk about rain as well. well. We have we have a few minutes left here. Can you go over this the, the C thing for us? Just do a one or two minute reminder of what you've, we've gone through today. Yeah, uh, search, evaluate, execute. Well, the other thing is that you're going to you're going to do that in curves as well. The, yeah, we talked about dangers, and let me briefly uh, indicate that the the da the biggest thing about a curve, the dangers in a curve factors that are building up are people that are enter curves. The entry speed is so important, and they enter too fast, and then they don't know how to handle it after that. So the, the thing that I like to tell students is when you come up to a curve, slow down more than you think you should. That's easy to fix. Going mm -hmm. in too fast, that's way hard to fix. Mm -hmm. Because And then once you see the exit, when you go around the curve, that's when you can accelerate. In up until that point is when you should be decelerating. It's dangerous so, to brake during a curve. That's not a good idea. You want to be braking ahead of that curve. Generally speaking, yes. And you want to be um, on the in, in, in the curve. You, you that the place to be would be, which lane, which of the three lanes? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> that, Norm that's a good political. Let's it just depends. say normally. Let's just say uh, most situations. Well, there, there's there's <laughs> let's let's talk about that. In, in curves, there's um, three three things that you're really talking about. At least three things that you're talking about. You're talking about the entry speed or the the entry speed and then the speed at the, the rest of the curve. You're talking about your position at the entry, inside, middle, or outside. You're talking about your position at the apex, middle, inside, or outside, and the position at your exit, middle, outside, outside. So if you do all that math, there's 27 different combinations. Now, all right, I know you're an accountant like I am, but I know for me, I normally, like in driving a car too, I normally, one of my friends was a California uh, trooper back in the day, and he be, he coached me on driving. I think one of the things he taught me, and I don't know if this is right, but I feel comfortable doing it, is 
in most cor- corners, curves, I'm, I'm going to be in that right lane, slowing down, and then gradually accelerate, you know, keeping my speed and then gradually accelerating out of it, coming from, is it, it's lane number three and coming back over to lane number one. It gives me the, the widest angle of attack. If I'm in the inside lane, I, it seems like it's a sharper and more difficult turn. Well, it's really different whether they're left curves, left-hand curves, or right-hand curves. I'm thinking left-hand turn, exactly. Yeah, I'm thinking a left-hand okay. turn. Yeah, exactly. Would that be right with a left-hand turn? Right-hand curves yeah. is the opposite. Yeah, okay, and exactly what right. There, what you described there is the outside, inside, outside approach. That's the performance oriented. Two major advantages to that is, first, you can see sooner around the curve because you're starting on the outside. And the other major advantage is, is that you're actually straightening out the curve. You can't do that in a car, but you can do that in a motorcycle. So you're so straightening cool. out the curve. You can go faster and safer doing that. The other major of the 27 different combinations are middle, middle, middle. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that is the uh, a, a safer, more conservative approach to doing that. Mm. And it, assuming that conditions are good, that you got dry pavement and there's nothing and no schmutz in the road. That's a technical term, by the way. Schmutz. I had never center. heard that before. Yeah, it's, a, it's a motorcycle technical term. So if there's nothing going on there, then middle, middle, middle might be a, a good approach. Why is that? Well, you have most safety margin on both sides. I see. If something goes wrong, you have time to maneuver either way. Okay. okay so we're, um, we're gonna we, we're gonna wrap this up uh, with the with C strategy uh, for for riding. The S E E S is for search. You're going to search far and near, side to side. Keep those eyes moving, not necessarily the head, but search for factors far and near, side to side. What about E? First E is evaluate. That's the cognitive part. That's the brain part. That's when you are actually formulating um, what's going on and asking, always asking the what if. What if that person or that car does this or this kid is going to run out here or what if uh, there's something around the curve? What am I going to do? What is the word execute? What are the three elements of the execute? Execute is you're going to execute your plan if you need to. And there's you can change your lane position, you can adjust your speed, or you can communicate. And communicate, there's a lot of different things to communicate. Like and that, that screaming, screaming mommy doesn't help, right? No. <laughs> we're talking with Peter Morton. He is a member, a fourth degree member of the Knights of Columbus. He's one of the charter members and past president of the Atlanta Knights on Bikes. He is, uh, people call him coach because he's been certified by the Motorcycle Safety Foundation and the Harley Davidson Academy. Uh, he's taught close to five or maybe 500 classes by now. And so we can't think of a better person to have uh, share with us. I know I, I love to ride motorcycles, but, and, 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 and I'm a biker. I mean, I love to ride. But um, when I'm around people like Peter Morton and other members of Knights on Bikes, it's just really impressed with their knowledge and the wisdom, how much we can learn. I feel like I know nothing when I'm around them. So, uh, Coach, thanks very much for being with us. We're going to be back with more of Between Two Bikes with Peter Morton, Coach Peter Morton. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak with uh, Long Ride Home. My, my website is deepadventure.com. You can find out more about us there. Or you can go to the YouTube site, Bear Wozniak, Deep Adventure YouTube site, and, and get more videos there. Peter? Viva Jesus. Viva Jesu. And as we say in uh, in Long Ride Home, Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Amen. Till next time, we'll be back. Peter Morton, I want to thank you for your commitment to Jesus Christ, to the Catholic faith, to Knights on Bikes, and also to motorcycle safety, and for considering some of the things that we've shared with you on our video. We also want to invite you to visit deepadventure.com. It's the home of the EW10 Long Ride Home TV series, and we invite you to become a Patreon donor. When you do, your name is listed in the credits of the TV show, and you get an all-seasons pass to all of the episodes, as well as early access to every new episode as we produce them. EW10 provides a limited amount of funding for our TV show, so we count on donors like you to help us produce the show. Thank you once again for joining us for our safety briefing.